Ukraine is closely watching the results of Tuesday's election and what it means for the war with Russia. Of course, we will work with uh, the president elected by U.S. people. We are confident that this support will be continued. Ukraine's foreign minister reinforced this message during a visit to Canada, adding that Western support for his country is a way to protect democracy. Canada co-hosted a summit in Montreal to discuss ways of returning Ukraine's civilians and children taken by Russia. Ukraine's justice minister was also part of that delegation. I spoke to her from Montreal on Wednesday. Minister Stephanie Shina, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you so much for inviting. It's very important for us. Well, and I will get to why you're in Canada uh, right now soon, but, but I do want to ask you a little bit about the U.S. election, because you were part of the delegation, you and, and President Zelensky, this fall in Washington. You presented the victory plan to President Biden, also to Vice President Harris and former President Trump. How was that victory plan received in Washington, and, and what kind of assurances were you given from the two campaigns? Thank you so much. I mean, uh, I, uh, there has been a lot of public communication and uh, uh, it's very important that uh, we had a chance to directly communicate with the current president of the United States and two uh, uh, of the candidates to uh, avoid misreading or min misperception in the position of Ukraine, in the needs that we have and in the in the dialogue we're going and we have been building with, with the U.S. Of course, as um, military billions of people around the world. We are looking forward for um, uh, the, the, the elections and uh, how the choice of the American people would, would evolve. But our main task is to make sure that we are capable to, uh, to survive. We're capable to uh, enhance our ability on the front line, but also to build additional political leverage, especially knowing that the transition of power is an inevitable process in the U.S. administration, regardless who will uh, win the election. So yeah. uh, we do our job and we really count on the best outcome for our country. So uh, speaking of best outcome, uh, it, Donald Trump has taken issue with U.S. aid to Ukraine. He has praised Vladimir Putin. Um, he has said that he will end the war in a day. How is your government preparing for the possibility of a, of a Trump presidency, given some of those statements? This is exactly why uh, my president has been really, um, uh, really proactive in building a personal con uh, communication with every candidate, but also uh, with the president Biden, just like weeks and months uh, ahead of the elections and the beginning of this transition of of power. And I think this is the the the, the biggest part of the job Ukraine can do as a country at war to ensure the direct channels of communication, precise exchange. Uh, and uh, this is a huge investment in the next steps to be taken by every candidate, regardless the outcome of the elections. I think that we should really uh, have to pay attention to a communication afterwards. I think it was very precise the, after the meeting of President uh, Zelensky and candidate Trump. I think that uh, it's um, nothing that really can increase encourage us to, uh, to count on any miracles, but uh, we have to be confident in the understanding that we did everything we can to not only to save our country and to survive as a country, but also to enable us to be more capable in the political and military arena. Okay, that, thank you for those answers. I, I, I do want to ask you, too, about some information that NATO confirmed this week, that thousands of North Korean troops are in Russia's Kursk region. Uh, how alarming is that development for Ukraine, and what does it mean, do you think, for the war? I think that this information is, of course, uh, very dramatic to us in terms of the understanding that Russia enhances the capability to increase the man, uh, man capital uh, on, the, on the front line, knowing that they have never been uh, putting uh, the human lives on the first layer of, of their military strategy. And this is, of course, a very concerning signal. But I think uh, this information being now public should be another driver and another element of uh, um, uh, in favor of uh, the elements of the victory plan, which would encourage the bigger coordination and stronger coordination in military support, making sure that our armed forces are capable of planning, sustaining, and advancing on a front line. And I think uh, it 
has all the necessary preconditions, but we really expect the political agenda and the political mobilization of the allies would really uh, have to be massive over these weeks. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about why you are in Canada. You are uh, leading the Ukrainian delegation meeting with uh, Minister Melanie Jolie about the human dimension of Ukraine's 10-point peace plan. What is the message that you're bringing to this meeting and to this visit? What, what are you hoping to achieve? Uh, we have a rather a rather powerful delegation. Uh, together with me, uh, we have a Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, the Chief of the Presidential Office, uh, Andrei Yermak, and a number of uh, key stakeholders in the government. We will concentrate our efforts on the forceful displacement and deportation of people, which is a new uh, element of the war crimes, which has become the reality and have uh, been massively scaled up uh, over the territory of Ukraine. Uh, with the current state of play on the battlefield, we do not have that dynamic information on the scope and amount of crimes committed on the occupied territories. So additionally to the data we've already collect collected and efforts we have already undertaken to bring back uh, particularly abducted and forcibly displaced children, we would mm -hmm. also uh, gather today to encourage international community to get access to information and the places where Ukrainian deported families, children and individuals and prisoners of war are held to get the information, data, and to be able to uh, form um, uh, the register of those abducted and forcibly displaced. I'll maybe just end on a question about NATO, because you are also the Deputy Prime Minister for European and Euro-Atlantic integration. So part of your job is also to keep the, the pedal on the gas when it comes to uh, getting uh, Ukraine full membership into NATO. Um, in a recent interview, the Vice President, Kamala Harris, said she would weigh in on that issue on a later point. I understand this is a long-term scenario, but I, I do think that Ukraine wants this to happen sooner rather than later. And I wonder um, whether you think it's critical that some movement happen on that front after the American election. What I can say is that, indeed, I've spent quite a time in my career in building the narrative around Ukraine's membership to NATO before the beginning of the full-scale war and afterwards. And I've heard a lot, and I would only be able to send a direct message that the decision on the future of Ukraine does not have to depend on the personal opinion of this or that individual leader. It should depend on the will and the, the geopolitical momentum. If this is not the momentum right now to uh, bring the certainty in the geopolitical arena and invite Ukraine to join NATO, this means a lot for uh, the planning of the development on the political and military strategy of the Russian Federation. They are have been been receiving and they will receive the signal that they have a green light to advance the war, to build uh, the alliances with the ideological partners, and the allies will continue hesitation on the future of Ukraine. Uh, hearing it with the ears of the Russian dictatorship, it's a very clear signal that Ukraine is seen as a gray zone. Ukraine will never tolerate that. And I think this is a dialogue between Ukraine and the allies, and yeah. it should be the dialogue not of individuals and leaders, a dialogue of a larger group of allies having the impact on the whole global security. And I really hope that uh, the decision will derive from that, but not from the personal opinion of uh, people in power right now in specific countries. Minister Stefanishina, thank you so much for making the time in Canada. I appreciate it. Thank you.